Well, thank you for coming out today. Um, again, please take advantage while you're here of uh, taking as many guitar, bass, drum lessons, whatever instrument you've chosen as possible. Um, I went here when I was 17 and learned so much stuff. Um, it really helped me out. I was basically an ear player before then, so I had um, you know, good experience playing in bands, learning shapes, trying to figure out songs, and got a lot from that. But uh, going to MI really organized everything in my brain, and, and ever since then I've never been in a rut. I remember as a kid, before I learned any music theory, you know, and I would just play the same patterns over and over again, and I'd sort of, it was very easy for me to get stuck in a rut. But after coming here and learning about the world of you know, different styles of music, music theory, and seeing so many great teachers, getting inspiration from them, uh, never again. There's always something to work on in the uh, giant, beautiful universe of music. So um, today, I want to show you some of the um, kind of the way my fast playing evolved uh, because I get a lot of questions about fast playing and I think this will help you not only if you want to get into my style but just to teach you the principle of how to take something very simple and expand on it and uh, hopefully I can also show you how to avoid some of the perils of saying peas loudly into the microphone and also <laughs> <laughs> the perils of <laughs> of playing fast. So, this first lick, um, let's see, I think I, uh, I was about 11 or 12 years old and my guitar teacher at the time uh, turned me on to a band called Black Sabbath. Yeah. And I was blown away because um, the bands, I think my favorite band at that time was Led Zeppelin and Led Zeppelin had some great huge riffs and uh, but the problem with Led Zeppelin records for me at that time was not every song was heavy. You know, they'd have a, you know, they have a couple of heavy songs, you know. <laughs> but then they'd have like, going to California, and I'd be going like, what's that acoustic? I don't want to hear that. I want to like all, you know, I wanted all metal as a kid. And Sabbath was pretty much all metal, like every song. So I thought that was really cool, and I tried to learn lots of the Sabbath riffs. You know. And at the time, I barely knew any solos. And one of the solos was in a song called Sweet Leaf. The riff is like this. I can't remember what key it's in. I'm just going to play an A. And at the end, the, um, the tempo changed. And it went into this totally different groove, like one, two, three, four. And so that lick I could actually handle. It only took two fingers. And it taught me a pull-off, or a hammer-on, whatever that is, or both. And I didn't have to pick any, every note, but it sounded good. And, and it was in, it, it matched the groove. It locked into the groove. You know, you could tap your foot to it. And so, because I didn't know anything else, I played only that solo for about a year. And... <laughs> And that's one of the keys to me for, for playing fast, is, is if you play something over and over and listen to it and really have it just soak into your DNA from playing it so much, um, it gets to the point where you can speed it up and have it still be convincing. And it's not sloppy, it's clean and rhythmic and, and sounds good. So um, after doing that for a really long time, I finally felt confident enough with it where I could start to do variations. Um, so. The second neck paper thing on there is the, is the first variation I want to show you. This is, um, I changed it to the key of C. And uh, this is the, these are the notes. Kind of using um, notes from the C blue scale. Again, this time I'm only using two fingers, uh, the first and the third. But you can hear how it's the same rhythmically identical. The picking is the same, the hammer-ons and pull-offs happen in the same place. So basically with, with very, very little work, you've taken one 
you know, one lead pattern and, and built another one. And the thing that I found, and this is one of the cool things about fast playing, is uh, the more I sped it up, uh, it began to, to develop a, a pulse that was totally unpredictable. I didn't ex expect it, because at, at a slower tempo, it is this pulse, like. And, but as I sped it up, like. It kind of took on a different pulse. And um, I was sort of squeezing all the notes just as fast as I could, but you can still lock it into a groove. And um, the best way to find that groove is just to find your you know, maximum tempo where it still sounds good. <laughs> and then start tapping your foot and, and see what that tempo is. So. <laughs> and then whatever song fits this tempo, you're going to be able to use that lick and it's going to lock in. So this tempo, let's see. beginning and an end and it locks in. And the thing I like about it is it's not like going, it's not like a really mathematical one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four kind of pattern. It's a little more organic because you're stuffing those notes in. So uh, that's one of the fast playing philosophies that I, that I like. So this one, I'm finally using three fingers. Uh, the first one and the last two. So. And this kind of feels similar, like this, this one that I did before. Let's take it up here. And then add that note. Now, the thing I like about this is, again, it's not just straight taka 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 16th notes. It breaks it up. It goes like It has different rhythms with, inside that lick. So it would almost be cool as a drum solo. I mean, a drummer could go and it's still an interesting rhythm even without the notes. But with the notes, you have something like this. And again, let's search for the tempo. So any song that you have that's got this tempo will work. Let's see, uh, what's the song with that tempo? actually fits in the rhythm. Thank you. This is, um, this is one of my kind of signature fast licks. Slow, I'll, I'll slow it down. What key is it in? Yeah, same key. And um, this is odd because it has 11 notes, which is not a normal, usually music doesn't divide itself into 11. That doesn't happen very often. But again, if you squeeze it into something, you know, if, you, if you play it fast and you listen for that pulse, it will fit into a normal rock groove. So the 11 notes sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I'm going to repeat that. And now I'm going to repeat it without the pause in between. So to just repeat over and over again. Now at that, at that tempo, it's, you're still not really hearing the pulse so much. You do have to start to speed it up. So let me demonstrate that. Let's see. Let me a little quieter so you can hear my foot. So 
that tempo is uh, the same as Iron Man. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> Do it while you do this. Yeah. Thank you. And that's that's probably the biggest key to avoid like messy sounding. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on the negatives. But the 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 dangerous part of playing fast is that it doesn't lock in. And I mean, if, if you have if you have a fast lick and it has no real rhythmic pulse to it, the only solution is to make it so loud that that it just overtakes the pulse of the whole band, it becomes the focus. Um, but you'd, you'll be amazed if you play stuff that has a pulse that's in time, your guitar can be like half as loud and it still cuts through because it has a, has a nice place to sit. So this one sounds like this, it goes three notes. And I love three notes because three notes is really simple. And in a way, simplicity is the key to playing fast, because if it's simple, you have a much better chance of speeding it up and not getting confused. So uh, this is a great lick, because it's three notes. And by the way, it begins with an upstroke. So it's up, down, and then uh, that pull off. Up, down, pull off. So if you watch my picking hand while I play this, it's just a little snap. It's like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like. So I'm not picking all of those. I'm picking two out of three notes. The last one is pulled off. And this one, I think, um, I think Jimi Hendrix used this, like Red House kind of stuff. <laughs> kind of 60s rock. And <laughs> but I love 60s rock, so I've got to do that one. And from there, it grew. Um, the next neck on there uh, has one extra note. So we took the same lick and added a D note. Now, you know, adding one extra note seems like no big thing. But the, the thing technically about this is it adds another string. Because now you're playing on three strings, and you have to get across them fairly quickly. Which isn't really much of a struggle for the left hand, but the right hand actually has to do the basic technique of string skipping. Because when you get to the bottom, and you have to get back to the top, you got to go between those two notes and skip the B string. I think I even sort of circled it on there so you can see on the tablature how that works. So if you just play that over and over again, you have no choice but to skip that B string when you start over. Now that lick has one, two, three, four, four notes. So because it has four notes, it's going to be really easy to lock it into some kind of um, some kind of time. So let's let's see how quickly I can play it and then we'll find the, the tempo. So that's gonna be a useful lick in this tempo. Let's see what song is in that tempo. I don't know the song, but I'll just do uh <laughs> Anytime you have a lick that's sort of a fast pattern, a great way to practice it after you, you know, whatever tempo you're at, is look for ways to get out of it. Because eventually it has to end. You know, you can't play it till the end of time. Eventually you have to find some way to get out of the lick. And to me, the best way to do that is to look for notes to bend. So in this case, let's go back to our key that's on the neck here, A minor. So let's look for all the places we can bend, maybe bending to the root, like. 
That's a nice place. Or the minor third, another good uh, chord tone in this key. Or maybe the fifth. Or from the sixth to the seventh. And just sort of map those out in your brain so you always have a place to, to exit. You know, a little a, a escape from the fast lick. You know, otherwise you're, without an escape, the, um, the whammy bar always becomes the solution. You know, <laughs> but, but it's nice to, nice to have some notes to go to as well. So uh, then we have, okay, I've, I have like three different tablature variations of this. Um, two is just the lick by itself. Three shows you the string skipping. And number four, I do exactly what I did, which is descending. And then I ascend from that note. So it'll be like. And again, the hammer-ons and pull-offs are really what makes this lick happen. It has some notes that are picked, but about half of them are hammer-on and pulled off. Let's play it quickly and find our tempo. Let's see. loud, so I'm craving some rock and roll. And up an octave to make it more exciting. The note I added was F. We've been doing this. And I'm going to add the F in between. So now it's five notes. And the picking is exactly the same, because I'm doing, uh, I'm doing a pull-off to, to get that F note to happen. Because it's pulled off, the pick doesn't need to do anything at all. So the picking is exactly the same as the previous lick. Again, every lick on this page starts with an upstroke. Now, that's starting to get a little more, you know, lots of notes flying out. Uh, it's, I think it's five, yeah. And again, let's search for the pulse. We're going to squeeze five notes into a normal, you know, 4-4 four, four pulse. And, it, you know, it, you can end it right on the dot. And that's another good way to practice fast licks, is make sure you can, you can end it with a nice staccato note, you know, short and, and accurate. And there's nothing unusual sounding about that. You know, it fits into your, in that tempo. You know, you can play it in Iron Man. So it becomes useful then. Um, if you can't find a pulse to your lick, it's, it's, uh, becomes a lot, <laughs> the best thing to do if you have a fast lick that won't fit in a pulse is write a song where the whole band stops and you do it and then you like look at them and go, okay, that's the end, and back into it. And I've done that before, it's, it's, it's a great technique, but most of the time it's, it helps to have a pulse and play with rhythm and people like that. So it was going, uh, but of course you can ascend as well. So that would be this. Crank it up to make it rock. There we go. All right. I'm going to take a breath after that. So most of those were, um, were a combination of picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs, which uh, personally I like the sound of. Um, to me, if everything is picked, it can be, it obviously becomes much more percussive. The sound of the pick starts to, um, you know, you have a lot more of it. But I like the, the combination of picking and hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, to me, it's more like speaking. Like when you speak, you have consonants and vowels. You know, you have hard letters like T and K and B and, uh, and you have soft, you have soft vowels like O and A and U and those things. 
So um, when you speak, you use both of them. And then to me, that, that combination of hammer-ons and pull-offs and picking um, kind of replicates that. Uh, and it gives you accents. You know, not every note is equal volume, but you have some parts that jump out. You know. <laughs> So it's, it's nice to have that flowing accent. Um, but it is fun to have all in your face picking, you know, as well. So I'm going to show you some of the patterns that uh, work well for picking. Um, let's see. The first one I'm doing on the top two strings. And actually, this one is where I made the, the unusual neck paper. If you look, I've got the 12th fret right in the middle because I, I wanted to do some patterns up high. So just imagine that the, the neck extends down here. But if you see the two dots, you'll know exactly where you are. Every guitar player knows where the two dots are. OK, so this one is in the key of C Dorian. <laughs> just like C minor, but you've got the major six. This lick is very simple. It's got four notes. They descend and they ascend. Or the year that I went to, um, that I was a student at GIT, I drove everybody crazy because I would just sit in the back of the room playing this lick over and over again. Because I was so excited because I, I had never played anything with fast picking before. Um, most of my guitar playing career as a teenager, uh, playing in copy bands, all I could do were those sort of combination hammer-on pull-off and picking licks. And this was the first one that I could do that had every note picked. And it still has a pulse. And the pulse still lies with the upstroke. Basically, all I did was just took it up the neck, uh, trying to stay within the notes of uh, C Dorian, and uh, took advantage of different positions. And so the first one I've been demonstrating already, I just moved it up to here. So this is just a way to get more mileage out of the same, the same lick. Then, uh, and last one, I think. Yeah, that's it. So. That's a great way to get into fast picking. It's relatively easy on the brain because it's very few notes. Um, when I've taught this to people, usually the main challenge is getting used to having the accent be an upstroke. Um, that's sort of counterintuitive sometimes because you want to, you know, you want to hit it down on the accent. So to have the, the up up be an accent takes a little bit of work, but it really helps if you know, if you just sort of tell yourself it's an up and. And, you, and, you, and you're aware of that. Um, rock guitar players, and myself included, spend a lot of time just sitting around playing and not thinking about it. And a lot of times, you have no idea what kind of stroke you're using. Am I doing an up or a down? I don't know. You know I mean, probably some of the greatest guitar players in the world still don't know that. But if you want to expand your playing and learn new things and reach out of your vo current vocabulary of licks, this is one way to, to do it, to just be really aware of where the strokes are, where the fingers are, what key you're in. <laughs> Knowledge is good sometimes. There's a lot of great, well, in all styles of music, you can, you can learn something. But in classical music, there's a lot of great patterns. And I stole this one from an Aaron Copland piece called Rodeo. Um, the piece sounds something like this, if you're familiar with, familiar with it, you might have heard it. It's uh, like a sort of sloppy version. Let's see. That's the basic part. And that little sequence at the end, I thought that was a nice sounding me melody, melodic kind of sequence. So in this case, I put it in C minor, which would be a. So 
So I took you know something from a classical piece and tried to make it rock. <laughs> So steal wherever you can. There's good stuff everywhere. All right, that's the papers. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah. I'm a fan of the song Boku no Otama. I just want to know what compelled you to write it. Like, I, I look at their lyrics and I know what it means. I just don't get it. <laughs> From whence did this song come? He's talking about a song called Boku no Otama, which is Japanese for my head. And um, I wrote it actually as a, I was studying Japanese and I was trying to remember my grammar and remember phrases. So I just wrote a song. I thought maybe if I write a song, I'll remember it better. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> so I was just trying to teach myself Japanese and, and uh, I, I can't even remember now. So. <laughs> Which means my head is made out of a tomato. And that means, but I like tomatoes better than pears or something like that. Yeah. It's eggplant. Yeah. I was trying to learn how to compare things in Japanese. You know, I like this better than that. And, uh, now I kind of know, but I can't do it unless I sing the melody. So that's Speaking of Racer X, what's the status? I need oh, to know. Oh, the status of Racer X. I need to know. <laughs> uh, well, the status I just you played with Bruce at G3, and that got me all excited. Oh yeah. Um, well, I hope. I mean, I hope to do more Racer X stuff in the future because I love the music and I love working with the guys because we've been friends since we were teenagers, and uh, it's it's nice when you can have a band like that. Uh, but right now, I just you know. I, just finished my new solo record a couple days ago, so uh, I'm still sort of mentally and physically recovering from that. I can't wait to stand up. I'm so excited I'm not sitting in a chair with headphones anymore. It's like stretching out my legs. Oh, they still work. <laughs> well, I can't but, wait, uh, but I definitely want to. Cool. It's an awesome band. Thanks for liking us. Oh, yeah. I love it. And, and you're, I'll see if I can muster up a Racer X song. Let's see. That's a good one. Uh, superhero. That, that's, that one's relatively easy, so thank you. <laughs> John Roth concert last quarter, I saw you there, and you didn't play as many notes as you did like when you were young. Uh -huh. H how, why is that? Uh, that I, I played with Uli Roth recently and I didn't play as many notes as when I was young. Um, my, my concept with notes at the moment is sort of like, the analogy I'll use is like a machine gun. Like if you have a machine gun, you've got it, like the bullets are the notes. So it's really easy to hit your target because you're just like Rambo going brrrr. But there's a lot of drama in having the gun with only one bullet left. And if you miss, you, you really miss bad. And if you get it, it's a glorious Clint Eastwood moment. So, <laughs> and actually Clint Eastwood did a great job with no bullets. He was like, you know, I can't even remember if I have any bullets in this gun. You know, you just have to ask yourself if you're feeling lucky, you know. <laughs> so, even with zero bullets, Clint Eastwood rocked. So I, I sort of hope, with my notes, um, to be able to do both. I want, the, I want the Rambo machine gun, and I want the Clint Eastwood no bullets, but just being cool. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's it. I, th I think um, my ear gets tired of a lot of fast notes all the time. And, and my ear just sort of craves to hear both kinds of music, fast and slow, country and western, you know, rock and roll. Uh, so it just, it just comes from my desire for what I want to hear. I try to, I try to play what I want to hear. Uh, 
can I answer that any other way to give you more depth? Um, also, I, I, I think I've been playing guitar now for a long enough time where it's a math challenge, <laughs> over, over 30 years, and hopefully my vocabulary is expanding. Um, you know, I, 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 I want to be able to play more and wider than I did when I began. Um, and of course, I mean, it's still, whenever you see like any old artist, you know, it's like, can they still do it? You know, you, you, go, see, you go see, you know, any, you know, like Ozzy, you know, he's 50, 57 now or whatever, you know, can he stand up? You know, and, uh, and, so, and so I still, you know, I'm 41 now, so I'm, I'm still, you know, tr trying to be able to do the, you know, still hope that I can do some of the useful licks. And, um, and they actually, they, they come back pretty easily. I mean, before a tour, I do a lot more warming up and, and get them together. But uh, I really want to be able to add some, some good notes in, in between. Uh, and the contrast is really nice. It's nice to have, if you play something slow, the fast stuff sounds more exciting after it. Or if you only play fast, it, it, um, you know, it, it, loses its, it loses its fire pretty quickly. Uh, that's actually, recently I was taking guitar lessons because I wanted to solve this problem, not just of playing fast, but of not stopping. Um, I noticed on my, my last solo record, which is an instrumental record, I don't stop very much, um, even when I play slow. There's a song called Hurry Up, which uh, the riff goes like this. It's eighth notes, not fast. <laughs> first place that it stops. It's just bop, 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 eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, eighth note, da, da, da. it never lets up. And uh, in a way, that's kind of a Bach thing. Like if you listen to Bach pieces, it's always like da, 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 da. it keeps going. There's rarely, rarely a spot to rest in a lot of his faster things. Um, and I like that, but I wanted to have the option of stopping once in a while. So uh, I, I started, as, I found a guitar teacher and I said like, how can I stop my hands from going? And, uh, and got into more the, the, the idea of composing and, and breathing with the music and finding somewhere to stop. So that's my personal challenge is like, and it's, it's hard when you're a guitar player, the instrument lends itself to not stopping because if you stop, <laughs> it does that. <laughs> yeah. And if you're a, yeah. <laughs> And if you play the trumpet or the saxophone or some, or you're a singer, it depends on the on the human lungs, and you have to stop because you have to breathe. And guitars are the opposite. If you stop, a horrible noise and, and howling happens. So um, it takes a lot of control, not only of you know compositionally what you're what you've written, but also just controlling the electric guitar and being able to turn down the volume or hit the fuzz pedal off, uh, or getting a tone that's clean enough where you can, you can stop with relatively small amount of noise. And that's a great exercise, you know, both playing-wise and with your gear, is to be able to, to do a solo with big holes in it. You know, I'm gonna just pick A and, and, and demonstrate it with some kind of groove. Let's see if you go. Uh, uh, It's hard for me to stop. Like it's, it's really scary. I mean, it's of course it's harder because there's not a band. If there was a band holding that pulse together, it makes it easier. 
but uh, when it's only me, you know, it's really a challenge. I gotta try that again, let's see. Then a nice big hole happened. Nice big hole, but uh, now let's see if I, I'll do it with the volume. trying to get those spaces. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, right. I just wanted to say uh, that you've been a huge inspiration and uh, above all the music and everything though, I wanted to thank you for, for always being so friendly and humble and <laughs> not, let, not letting being awesome get in your head like sometimes happens to people. It's, uh, well, you're welcome and uh, it's, it's, I'm just happy to have a job as a musician. I mean, I, I came from a town where, where, the, where the biggest options for, for being an adult were, you know, being like a, a, a pig farmer or a coal miner. And so, you know, to be able to play guitar, I was like, oh, my God, I don't have to use a shovel for work. This is going to be great. <laughs> so uh, if I did, I'd probably have much bigger arms than I do now. But, <laughs> but I'd have, like, black lung and, you know. So thank you for giving me my job as a guitar player. I really appreciate it. I'll, I'll try to get on the push-ups and get this happening. OK, I'm going to take, uh, let's see. I still want to play with me band, but I'll do one more. There. Uh, this is a composition question, actually. I heard you have some kind of technique where you have a consistent strain of perhaps 16th notes or something. And then you'll take away and create a rhythmic pattern of some sort, and then maybe add a scale or pitches to that. Could you go through the process of how you might? I'm sorry, say it one more time. OK. Um, you have, uh, or I've heard that you have like a consistent strain of 16th notes or something like that. And then you take out certain beats to create a rhythmic pattern. And then how you uh, add scales or pitches to that. Could you go through the process of how you would go about thinking? Huh. That's a good idea, but I don't know if I do it. Um, well, now you can. To, yeah, because that would be that would be a cool way to, to get phrases. Is you you sort of fill it up and then you erase some. Um, what would I do? Yeah, I don't know if I've done that, but I'm going to go do that after the clinic. You know. <laughs> um, I think um, if I had to categorize my guitar phrases, the the ones that are sixteenth notes. Um, yeah, I don't subtract them because they're technically it's, it's hard to just rip a note out. Uh, if I have something like this, like um, yeah, so I mean, the way I might make it breathe more is by not picking everything. Instead of going like, I might try to make it breathe by accenting certain ones. And so that gives you a little bit of the illusion of certain notes uh, you know, being rhythmically more important than other ones or louder. You know, so. That's a little easier on the ear. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great concept, but I, I got to work on it. But thank you. My question is, um, I'm, a, I'm an older player. And I'm always trying to develop my style and develop a sound. And I'm wondering, uh, do you have some suggestions? Maybe so. I know this is a general question, but some kind of ideas for someone that's a little bit older that's developing a sound 
And, uh, you know, maybe it's like a mindset thing, or is your learning different now than when you were younger? Because you mentioned you've been playing for over 30 years, and I've been playing off and on for many years. And just more recently, I've been more, you know, focused in getting into it and developing more and more. And I'm just wondering if you have any ideas or, you know, general suggestions. Yeah. Well, you're in the right place because you're, you're at a guitar school. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so to me, I mean, I, I started taking lessons. I, I found, um, I think, I think, uh, what's, what's his, um, his name is uh, Barrett Taglarino. I think he teaches here. And, uh, and I, I, I went there a bunch last year, you know, over to his house and it was just like, Barrett, how do I stop? And, and teach me how to play autumn leaves. And you know. so, you know, I was just trying to expand on what I, I knew already. Um, but as, as far as specific ways to learn how to expand, I mean, I, I took what I was interested in. Um, the first thing that I took to Barrett was there was a bunch of kind of, of songs that I really liked that I didn't understand. You know, I, 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 some of the chords I just couldn't figure out, and uh, and some of the chords maybe I could figure them out, but I didn't I didn't understand how the writer came up with them. But I loved the music, so I followed. That was my motivation. I was just like, I love this song, but how do you? Where did this come from? You know, because I want to I want to write a song like this myself and. Uh, so I would take things that you're passionate about, things that you, things you've heard that you dig, and you know find people who know about them, and say, "What is this?" You know, that's that's what I did when I was 12, and that's what I do now. I mean, when I was 12, I, I took Van Halen one, and was like, you know, what's going on here? You know? And and now I'm taking Shaka Khan tunes and going, you know, what's, you know, what's uh, what's this what's this crazy chord? You know? And uh, I mean, t today some of the songs that I chose to play with uh, with Jeff and John. Our songs, the reason I chose them is because they're, they're not my style, because they help me to expand, because, because they're, they're, they're unfamiliar. And, but I didn't just randomly pick the unfamiliar, I went to, for the unfamiliar that I liked. And uh, so, you know, pick stuff that you love to listen to and, and try to play it. And, and learning songs is, is the, always the ultimate inspirer for me, because um, everything is attached to that. Uh, you know, if you, if you hear a song and, and you love it, you know, just even if it's simple, I mean, you know, just just learn. I mean, simple's better, if it's, especially if it's simple. Uh, and just you know, tr try to play from the beginning to the end and figure out the parts. I'm trying to figure out what I, if I, anything I figured out recently, song-wise. Oh, th this one. This is a. Um, I I recently put my whole CD collection into into iTunes, and which is amazing because I found all this music that I had but I didn't know I had, <laughs> and there was this band called the Zombies. Um, yeah. And I think they had a big hit. Was like, was the time of the season? It's the time of the season for loving. And but they had a couple other songs that weren't hits. There's one that goes. Um, that, uh, it's on piano, but the chords are like. It's uh, the warmth of your love's like the warmth of the sun. And this will be our year. It took a long time to come. Hold on to my hand. No worries, we'll be gone. And this will be our year. It took a long time to come. And I won't forget when you helped me up when I was down. And I won't forget when you said, darling, I love you. You gave me will to go. Oh, now we're there. And we all only just begun and this will be our year it took a long time to come and from that I learned that chord which I already knew here but I never thought of doing it here and it reminded me of the really cool John Lennon chord where he goes I read the news today and I always forget about that one because it's, it's like a minor chord with a fifth in the bass like an A major with G in the bass. And you know, the, whenever you hear piano voicings, you come up with weird voicings on guitar. So that one was just fun. And uh, well, also classical pieces. I mean, to me, learning Bach stuff is always a great, a great uh, way to, to get new techniques. So I was learning like, uh, uh, let me see if I can stretch it without.
far as hard. And I got to play the left hand part. The left hand part's really cool. It goes. Actually, when I, when I came to the school was the first time that I really started trying to read a lot as well. And that's, that was one that was a nice one to have a little bit of reading knowledge because melodically, a lot of the parts were, were very easy to hear. Like, uh, you know, those are relatively predictable patterns. But uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the left hand part was, was crazy. So I actually, I actually read it. I couldn't believe it. I thought I forgot how to read. I forgot how to tune. There it is. OK, do we have one? I, I'm, I'm on a roll here, but I want to play with the band soon. I'll take this as the last one. OK, I, I, uh, my name is Miz, and I'm uh, glad to meet you. And then uh, it's not a uh, question, but uh, I have a dream like one day my superhero Paul Gilbert played a piece of Colorado Bulldog wow. in front of me. Is that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's a good dream. <laughs> on, uh, on the last G3 tour, I was using that as an end because the, the end of a Racer X song called Skit Scat Wah is actually the same lick. I used it twice. And I practiced it a lot and got really good at it. And uh, I haven't practiced it a lot, so I'm not really good at it now, but I'll give it a shot. And the best way, if you're not good at something, is to get better at it, is to practice. So let me give, have a couple slow practice runs with my foot on the monitor, like uh, the guy from Iron Maiden. <laughs> Distorted version. Let's see. That's too ugly. Hold on. I've got like three fuzz pedals on here. I've got to figure out the best one.
This is 